G'day guys, in this video we are going to introduce you to one of the most exciting, controversial wine styles on the planet. It is Pet Nat or Petulant Naturel. Uh, Tom here from Different Drop. I'm here with Tim Wildman, master of wine and master of all things Pet Nat, to tell us, Tim, what the fuck is Pet Nat? What the fuck is Pet Nat? Um, good question, Tom. Well, um, yes, so I am a self-confessed Pet Nat tragic. Uh, I started making Pet Nat in South Australia in 2014. I recently started making Pet Nat in the UK, in England. So I've got Pet Nat projects going on both sides of the planet. Pet Nat, um, it is the sort of, it's the original sparkling wine. You could also say it's the original accidental wine. So very brief history, records in France go back to the 17th century, talking about uh, making this style of wine in the South, in the Languedoc. That predates Champagne by about 100 years. Um, and basically it was just what happens if you have a barrel of wine in your cellar fermenting and it gets a bit fizzy because the yeast keep on going and then you bottle it crudely somehow and the fizz stays in the bottle. That is literally pet nat. The, the shortest explanation I've ever managed to come to for a pet nat, and th this is it, the minimum number of words, pet nat, is interrupting the primary ferment by bottling. That's about five words. Um, we can talk a bit about that, but uh, should we uh, start drinking some anyway? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. So what we've done here is we've um, pulled out three Australian pet nuts that we think are amongst the best in the country and three of the producers that, that I think um, do, do this style justice the most and have been making these wines the longest. So first up, BK, uh, Brendan Keyes from the Adelaide Hills. I reckon probably the first Australian pet nats that we purchased. And I've got to say, so pet nat has come so far in the 10 years or so that we've been selling pet nats here in Australia. That they started off very inconsistent and variable, very cloudy and lots of sediment. And it was really uh, hit and miss. And the style's now a clean, pristine, uh, precise uh, and, and great fun. I mean, Tim, you make you make a lot of pet nat yourself. I mean, this is a, a style made from Chardonnay. How, yeah. does, how does Chardonnay translate into this style? Yeah, well, I think it's interesting. I mean, just to give these two guys their credit first, when I first made my pet nat in 2014, there were um, six people making pet nats in Australia, literally six. These were two of them. Uh, so BK made his first one in 2012, I think. Um, so these guys go right back to it. Um, in Europe, the kind of modern phase of pet nap probably started in the 80s. So it's still quite recent. Um, so I think there's a few key things to understand about pet nap. First of all, as a style of wine, it's not varietally specific, it's not region specific. So here we have Adelaide Hills, WA, uh, Adelaide Hills, a bit of McLaren Vale, three different colours, white, rosé, darker rosé. It can be made from almost any grape varieties um, because what the winemakers are looking for is they're trying to make a style of wine and that style is Pet Nat. And, you know, I always say that you can divide the world of wine up into two different ways if you want, you know, old world, new world, uh, red, white. But I think it's helpful to think about fine wine and fun wine. And we all know what fine wine is, you know, fine wine is that stuff that, you know, is quite expensive, it ages, gets better over time. And then you've got fun wine. And Pet Nat is the ultimate fun wine. And, you know, that's why, well, you can, you know, answer this. Why do people drink Pet Nat? Why drink Pet Nat? I think it's, um, it's, it's become like an alternative to, to drinking beer, to drinking cider, uh, RTDs, even rosé. It's a, it's a picnic wine, um, great with, um, you know, light food, you know, a, a bowl of prawns, um, you know, snacks, chips, whatever. It's just fresh zingy um always great flavor quite fruity uh and just fun you know it's just kind of thing is rip the rip the top off on, on a picnic rug and hopefully not all over the picnic rug i say the gushes uh and, and just great fun um but i think what's been exciting to see is that without abandoning the fun these wines are getting better and better i mean this is fantastic yeah, this is 100 yeah, chardonnay yeah. and it's got this like laser like acidity and length um from, from bk really really cool i think i can give you my sort of three top tips for drinking Pet Nat. This is how I think about it, not only when I'm drinking it, when I'm making it. So I think first of all, you have to be thinking about, you know, is the wine, you know, fruity? Is it tasty? 
Um, this certainly is a good example of Chardonnay, but if we move on to the um, oh, other thing to say, Pet Nats kind of come in two broad categories. You've got the ones without, without any sediment, disgorged, and the ones with a bit of sediment, undisgorged. And these ones, you can shake them up, you know? They look a bit nicer when you shake them up, and um, it gives a bit of texture as well. So this is Shiraz and Riesling. Bit of a gush up. That's okay, we call Not it that. Not bad, I like yeah, that, yeah. bit of foam. Yeah. But that's fantastic. So, that's always, I've got to say as well, one of the hardest things to get right yeah. in pet nat is the fizz, isn't it? And I think maybe you yeah. said to me last time that with, with great pet nat, you don't want fizz, you want foam. Exactly. Right? Yeah. I just want to coat the mouth and, and be easy to drink. Absolutely. Well, fizz is my number two. So number one is the fruit. You know, good pet nat should be fun. It should be fruity. Uh, number two is the foam. You know, it's, it, it's, the, it's in the category of sparkling wine. So it has bubbles. That's what defines it. And good pet nat like this, you know, you can see the bubbles when you open it, it just foams up enough. And like Tom said, I love pet nats that have like, it was like a, a kind of Cooper's Ale foam that kind of expands in the mouth and collapses rather than a sort of aggressive champagne fizz that goes up your nose. And that's partly to do with the pressure. You know, pet nats are usually about half the pressure of champagne. Now, the third point. Ooh. That's delicious. The third Ries point, Riesling Shiraz as well, just yeah, yeah. quietly from Grace Southern. Fantastic producer. The third thing to think about when drinking Pet Nat is probably the elephant in the room. This is the oh. thing that doesn't get talked about often. It's faults. Pet Nat, because it fits into the natural wine category, nearly all Pet Nat producers are going to be working with zero sulphur. Things can go wrong. And Pet Nat, although it is theoretically the simplest wine to make, you're just bottling that primary ferment. Um, if you're working with no sulphur in a kind of hands-off, lo-fi way, you can get issues. And these faults and flaws, you know, without getting too technical, they can range from a kind of a, a flavour called mousiness to a volatile acidity, which is sort of like a nail varnish thing. Also, the, the fizz in the sediment can be a flaw if excessive. So some, you know, you don't want a pet nap where the sediment's like muddy no, and gloopy, no. or it's too fizzy and it explodes, or it's not fizzy enough and it's flat. So the other three things I think about, the fruit, the fizz, and is it fault free or not? And when you put those three Fs together, <laughs> then that should be fun, basically. Mm. Absolutely. Okay. So that's, that's delicious. A lovely little creaminess and texture to that as well. And now this is Tim's own wine, one of the two pet nats that he's become known for here in Australia and around the world, I might add. This is Piggy Pop. So Piggy Pop, you know, again, pet nats has to have that immediacy. I think a pretty colour is really important. You know, we all drink with our eyes. Um, and yeah, the basis of this wine has always been uh, Nero Davila from McLaren Vale, a grape that's really suited to the region, suited to South Australia, uh, climate appropriate. But if you just pick it on the early side, you get this amazing red fruit. Like a lot of people, if they drink Nero Davila as a wine, it's a red table wine, it's often dark black yeah. fruits. But if you just pick it a bit earlier, you get these red fruits. And when I was writing the tasting notes for this, for this 2022 bottle, I was just writing, oh, uh, Morello cherries, uh, cocktail cherries. Uh, I was like, oh, all the cherries. That is absolutely delicious. I'm not just saying that because you sit next to me. Um, seriously, just, yeah, all the red fruits. Mm. Uh, it's like some kind of liqueur almost, but, but then with zip and freshness and, 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 the, and the foam there as well. Uh, an awesome example of, of the style. Um, and I think just moving up in, in body weight almost as you go through these. I mean, these are just three... Um, you know, there's there's dozens and dozens, if not hundreds, of Australian pet nats. You know, well, I mean, doing really yeah, well we were right. saying, you know, when I started, there were probably six people in the country making them. Now there's yeah. 300. Interestingly, I started making pet nats in England two years ago. I did a tasting last year. I tried to get all the pet nats in England and Wales together on one table, and there were actually 36 pet nats from 24 producers. So it's still in its infancy, but it's going somewhere. Um, what's the future of pet nats on? Where, where I, think it's, I think it's really exciting. I, I think the category is maturing. I think mm -hmm. a lot of producers are making the wines, which is making it competitive, um, which is a great thing because yeah. it's driving the quality forward. Uh, and every year we're seeing these wines get more and more clean, precise, uh, still packed with flavour. 
Um, it's nice to have some sunshine this summer for the first time in a few years too, and a good excuse to open some. But no, we're seeing pet nut sales explode. I, I can't see any reason for it to slow down uh, as champagne prices go up and even Prosecco prices go up. Having a domestic option for small artisan producers to be able to make a delicious sparkling wine is really important and, and it's just really exciting. So guys, check out Pet Nat, um, check out Tim's, the, the Wildman, the Piggy Pop, the Astro Bunny. We love, we love the Wildman Pet Nats, they're some of the best around. Um, but yeah, lots of great Pet Nats and, and as I said, all from great small producers. So support the, the independent guys and and uh, get some, what do you call it? Thinky drinky. Uh, yeah, Pet Nat sits in that wonderful uh, bit of the, uh, the, the Venn diagram, thinky drinky. Thinky drinky. It's right. drinky, but you can think about it, bit of detail. My final point on the future of Pet Nats, yeah. um, there's a lot of players now in the market, which means I think people are having to uh, get better at what they do. And crucially, people are learning the art of making it because it is as much an art as a science when you're dealing with low sulfur minimum wines. So uh -huh. I do think Pet Nats are getting better. Mm. They're getting cleaner and fruitier. Um, and to your point, I think fundamentally, the, the, the genius of Pet Nats is it's not trying to be champagne. Yeah. And so many sparkling wines in this kind of price category, they're either trying to be champagne mm. or they're trying to be Prosecco. Mm. And that's about it. You've know, yeah. you got you, you two options. And Pet Nats is its own thing. But what you're getting is you're getting a, an artisan wine crafted by a person, yeah. you know, who you can find out what their name is. You know, it's from somewhere. Uh, it's fun, drink now. And I think people want to pay for that character and interest and fun, yeah. rather than something just a bit more generic at the same price. Um, a new category is, is the colorful wine category. That's what they are. The colorful wine category, love it. All right, guys, cheers. Cheers.